Merry Vlogmas family. It is your girl T, the nappy headed jojoba. Not nappy, not jojoba. Nappy headed jojoba, or just call me T and save us all some time. And I'm back today with another Makeup Monday. Editing T here. You know, I'm not a huge fan of editing so and so clips popping in, but Vlogmas, Vlogmas got your girl crazy. I can't keep track of what day it is, when I shot what, in what order anything is airing, and that is why, first of all, obviously the braids are back today. That's because I shot this video before I shot yesterday's video, and I shot them so far apart I forgot that I am wearing the same sweatshirt in both videos because I did laundry yesterday and don't hate me for liking my own merch. Last time that I checked, this was actually the number one winning topic for a Vlogmas video on my Patreon poll. So thank you to my Patreon fam and everyone who voted because uh, clearly y'all really wanted to see this one. We're talking about makeup, hair, skin, that made me do a complete 180. Either I thought it was trash and then I completely flip flop and came around and loved it, or opposite. I thought it was good and now I hate it. This really runs the gamut so I'm just gonna jump right in. These are definitely all over the place but I got 10 things to show y'all so let's just jump right in. First up we have the Good Molecules Niacinamide Brightening Toner. Obviously this is not full size. I ordered some more of this during their Black Friday sale but it hasn't arrived yet so this is just a little sample that I probably got in a Beautylish order at some point but this product really changed my mind. One about toners because I thought toners were just not worth it for my skin and a complete waste of time. And two, it changed my mind about the ingredient niacinamide. I thought that it was just all hype. I was just like, mm, that ain't going to do nothing for me. And this completely changed my mind about both of those. Once again, I had the full size and I used the whole thing and I'm just waiting for my re-up. It absolutely helped even out my skin tone and also reduce the size of my pores or at least the appearance of the size of my pores. Who knew a toner could do that? The way I like to use it is I just shake a few drops into my palms and then I press it in to clean skin in the morning and while we're on good molecules here's another fave that I also purchased a re-up on but this one is still going for me I got about this much left so I'm still pretty good this is their discoloration correcting serum I've been using a few drops of this at night on cleanse skin just to deal with you know the hyperpigmentation the usual issues oh shut up truck Ugh, we're gonna have to press on with the noise I really do have to give it to good molecules though because this is a brand where I I'm gonna be completely honest it was so much hype around it, kind of like with The Ordinary, which is like, that hype can't be real. And now I'm purchasing from them as a whole ass customer. So they really did their thing. I'm really a big fan of their products. I'm really a big fan of the price point. So total 180 here on multiple fronts when it comes to my feelings about toners, my feeling about whether the ingredient niacinamide would even matter for my skin. And third, my side eyeing of the brand Good Molecules as a whole. I thought that perhaps it was just too good to be true, but the hype is actually real. Next up is this palette from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Instant Eye Palette in Pillow Talk. A lot of y'all already know that I straight up love this brand. If I could only wear one brand and feel like I still would have everything I wanted to make beautiful looks day to day, it would probably be Charlotte Tilbury. I just feel like they have everything I need. So when this palette came out, I was excited because it has the most mattes in any of her Instant Eye Palettes out of any that she had done previously. And I think out of any that she's done since. Because my favorite palette maybe of life is her Luxury Eye Quad in the sophisticate. I've talked about it a lot of times, so we're not gonna do it today. So when I was seeing the promotional images and getting the details on this palette before it launched, I was excited because it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mattes out of 12 shades. So it's like three quarters mattes. And I thought it would be a dope like expansion pack to my love of that luxury eye quad in the Sophisticate. And I believe this came out around my birthday because I remember picking it up from Nordstrom as a birthday gift to myself took it home, tried to look, and was just like, bitch wit, not impressed, not at all. Matter of fact, I returned it. It's true, I tried the palette a couple times, I just wasn't feeling the looks, and I returned it, I was just like, oh, what a disappointment, I was excited to have all of these new tones of mattes from Charlotte, but I guess that palette just wasn't for me. But for some reason, I could just never fully move on, like even after I returned her, I still had her in my wish list, and I was just like, should I, did I give that enough of a chance? Clearly, I did buy it again. I think there was some kind of promotion or discount or gift, up, gift with purchase or something on Charlotte Tilbury's own site. So I bought her again and I'm so glad I did because I love this palette now. <laughs> so I guess technically this is a 360 because I loved the idea of it 
hated it when I first and second tried it and then loved it when I tried it again after trying more looks since getting it this second time around. This has actually been one of my go-to everyday palettes when I just need to do like zoom makeup. But you can also get a little bit more fun with this last trio here on the end with the pinks. You can actually get pretty smoky because I feel like this trio, the date one, is a lot deeper than it appears in the pan. Like these these pack a punch, and I find that that tends to be true with a lot of Charlotte Tilbury's mattes because the Sophisticate Eye Quad, which is my fave, I always tell you guys how ashy she looks in the pan, but she shows up on my eyes beautifully. There is just something about the formula that she has for her shadows, and it has changed over time, but generally speaking, the appearance of these eyeshadow powders on the skin just look so refined. That's why I love this as an everyday palette too because it's just so easy to blend. I can just whack one or two colors on my eyes and look way more put together than I would otherwise have looked when I'm doing all these like Zoom calls and whatnot. I just really love her. I, I'm glad that I gave it another chance because it's been a very well-loved, well-used palette. I'm wearing it right now. You know, nothing crazy. It's a very basic everyday look but I like basic everyday looks sometimes, so she's perfect for that. And my love for that, I don't think would have happened without my love for this. Controversial! Although this was not a controversial palette always, it became controversial when Vax Von D became a pariah. This is the original Shade and Light Eye Palette, and this palette made me do a 180 on just how I thought about the kind of makeup I like, the eyeshadow looks that I like to do day to day, in general. This is the palette that made me love a all matte neutral eye look and really like kind of gravitate toward that most of the time. Like that is usually what I will wear unless I'm like going on camera and I'm really just doing the most. If you've been in the makeup scene on YouTube for a while, you'll remember when everyone was using the original Naked palette from Urban Decay or the Lorac uh, Pro palette, the black one, like that first one. And then everyone was excited when they came up with the second one that I think had the blue packaging. For me, this was that palette. Like I had both of those. I don't wanna talk about it. They've long since been decluttered. And frankly, I can't remember coming up with looks that I liked out of either of them. But this palette was that palette for me. The way it was laid out from the neutrals to cools to warms, even the fact that these quads are kind of similar to how Charlotte Tilbury lays out her luxury eye quads, which are, you know, like prime shade, enhanced shade, smoke shade, pop shade, like they never, explicitly said that with the Vax Von D palettes in their marketing language, but I felt like it was a much more accessible, affordable price point for that similar experience because the price of this palette was cheaper than one of Charlotte Tilbury's quads and you got basically three different options in one. Not to mention all the options you get if you wanna dip and dabble across the three different quads. We all know that nobody likes Kat Von D anymore, but I still love this palette. I still use it. I know it's probably like too old, but powders last forever. I do it at my own risk, leave me alone. And I'm always still so impressed with how nice my looks turn out. Like it's just such a good palette. But again, you probably need to be a matte, neutral, loving <laughs> like me, or if you just wanna buy one palette, to get all of those bases covered and not have to buy any other matte neutrals ever again. This might be the one for you and supposedly like she's been bought out of her company. So if you're worried about her like profiting from you <laughs> buying this palette at this point, I think you're in the clear, but I don't know. I feel like the train has sailed on this one and everyone's over it except for me. The next product that made me do a complete 180 is blush, like just in general as a concept. I remember saying a few times in videos from years past that I just straight up didn't really care for blush. I feel like it made things look a little bit too overdone, a little bit too try hard when it came to my makeup. And now I live for blush, I live for a blush drape. And I think the main product that made me turn around and start to really love embracing blush, like not just like subtle blush to like make myself look a little bit more healthy, but blush was just like, oh, she's she's wearing blush because it's all over her face, i.e. blush draping. But we all know by now that I'm a cream loving hoe in general. Okay, you know what? Poor word choice, I hear it too. But now there are certain formulations of powder blushes that I love almost or maybe just as much as I love cream blushes. Cream blushes are probably still number one, but I really love the Surratt blushes. They're not cheap, it's Surratt, it's a luxury brand. But these are just so easy to control because they blend themselves basically. They're very buildable. If I am doing a blush draping look, I honestly feel so painterly when I'm just 
whipping them around my face and across my eyelids and creating the shape and the like the gradations almost like with Lisa Eldridge's uh, watercolor technique video I love using these to do those kinds of blush looks I have three tones in here and I honestly don't remember what they are now these are in a makeup forever magnetic palette Surratt makes their own palettes for their their products like you can do a combination of eyeshadows and blushes in them or you can do just blushes just eyeshadows their palettes either hold four eyeshadows and two blushes or like one blush and two shadows or you can get their larger palette which holds up to three blushes or up to six shadows or some combination therein however I'm bougie on a budget as so many people like to say and the Surratt palettes are 20 to 25 dollars depending on the size you get this makeup forever one two dollars so I say all the time I do not give a fuck about packaging like I just need a place to put my blushes please so I just got some magnets off of eBay pop them on the back of these blushes Bob's your uncle I don't remember what these shades are I know the shades of my orange blushes by Surratt by heart but these ones I especially love these tones for blush draping looks. so this one is Ponceux Sorry, I don't speak French. I'm doing my best here. This mid-tone one is classique and this one is rouge. Again, I don't speak French. Don't check me. But I love this gradation. It really gives me a lot of flexibility when I'm doing blush draping looks in terms of where I want to go a little darker, or a little lighter. Just gorgeous. I love them. They really made me love blush and I used to hate blush. Coming in at number five, we have a hair product and that is the African Pride Moisture Miracle Detangle and Condition shampoo I imagine quite a lot of you came to know me from seeing my videos on my homemade pre poo I still make that or a version of it it has changed quite a lot and I should probably do a video but I incorporate some of this and this product made me do a 180 because I did a comparison video and I didn't find that it made my detangling process any faster than my homemade recipe so initially I was just like well I don't really need that I can just keep making my homemade pre poo but I did a 180 because why make it if I can just use this and save the time? What I usually do is I'll still use this and mix it with some coconut oil and a few other ingredients because I wanna just make sure that I'm still getting that coconut oil on my hair because that's the most important part of actually putting my pre poo on my hair the night before I wash. But as far as the detangling goes, this works as well for me as my homemade mix. So why do all that? Like why go through melting down coconut cream and all that drama when I can just do this, mix in one or two other things and be done? So I changed my mind. I, I will not be without this. I always have a jar in my cabinet. I even like to use it as a booster to mix in with deep conditioners. I'll just add an ounce or two to give them more slip if they need it so that I can really detangle my hair at that step as well. And it's great. This, I got it from a black owned beauty supply store and it was eight bucks. It may be a little bit cheaper if you get it from somewhere else, but I would rather spend another dollar or two and support a black owned business. Going back to makeup, we have the Natasha Denona Sunrise Palette. Now this product is one where I have like, like gone back and forth with the 180 kind of like with the Charlotte Tilbury palette I don't remember if this came out in 2019 but I think that's right I was really 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 excited for this palette I thought the color story was super interesting and then um, I don't know what it was but I didn't find myself using it that much even though I enjoyed the looks that I got out of it and I think that that is still kind of the case like at this point because this is no longer an innovative color story whenever I'm trying to figure out what look I want to make I'm just like Ugh, I'm so bored of this color story but when I actually force myself to use it, I'm just like why do I ever wear any other palette this is beautiful so this is just such an interesting one in this list because I feel like I do a 180 on it every time I pick it up. It's like I never want to use it and then when I do use it I'm like oh I'm so glad I used that. Even though the color story at this point is a little bit dated and I feel like there's a bit this is something that happens with a lot of Natasha Denona palettes there's some redundant shades in here frankly this could have been a nine panner because there's just some shades there it's kind of the same thing you can't detect the difference between like this and this on the eye or this and this on the eye but I've come to realize that I love this palette more than I give it credit for. When I think about it, I'm like, oh, I remember doing this look that I really, really loved. I wanna recreate that look because I felt so good in it. So yeah, this is one where I'm constantly waffling. Next up, we have these glosses from Tower 28. These are their lip jellies. And I can't remember exactly what they called this line, but they were called like milks or something but like milk with like a y instead of an i and i was like barf so i wasn't particularly interested in these they were kind enough to send them to me which was a surprise because i was just i'm always just surprised when a brand even knows i exist let alone a brand that i like already but when i was seeing these i thought that they seemed like a misstep like i i, I love a good nude lip gloss but something about these tones didn't seem right to me like i'll hold them a bit closer so you can see 
I don't know what it was, but I was just like, I don't think these are going to look right on me, girl, when I pulled them out of the box. Turns out I love them all. Even this super light one, I was wearing this a bit earlier today before I started filming. Right now I have on some of cashew on top of my lipstick. And you can see that I've been loving Almond the most. She's already like a third of the way gone. But these don't get put away. Like there'll be one on my vanity, one on my bathroom counter, one on my desk, one in my, you know, my coat pocket or whatever. I just wear these and grab for these the most these days when it comes to lip gloss because they're comfortable, they're cushiony on the lips. You don't get that sticky, gross feeling or like the weird like spittle, you know, the spittle or the ring around the inside. Ugh, the yuck, the yuck of it all. So I stand corrected. Tower 28 knew what they were doing when they came up with these shades because I don't know why they didn't look nice to me in the tubes, but they look really, really wonderful on the lips, at least with my complexion. I really love them. I feel like they flatter my lip color, my natural lip color, but still, each one provides their own tint, like just the perfect amount where it's enough to wear on its own with like a full face if I want, but also subtle enough to wear on their own if I have no other makeup on. Next up, we have a luxury item and this is from Tom Ford. Now this might be hard to find, but I talked about this in my 2019 Beauty Favorites, which was a Patreon exclusive, so some of you guys might not have seen it. But this is the illuminating powder. This is basically Tom Ford's take on a banana powder. And after having some uh, less than nice experiences with other banana powders from other brands, I was like, banana powder is not for me. It's, it's no good. And even when I was first using this one, I was just like, I don't get it. But I don't know, maybe I just was still kind of learning how to perfect my base at the time because now I really don't even like to do my makeup without this. This is my favorite powder to use under my eyes to set concealer. And again, it is hard to find. So if I can find links for you guys, I'll let you know. I've been working on this same one for quite a while now. But I find that if my concealer didn't quite do its entire job and I still have some darkness, just a bit of that under the eyes will brighten that area. It is called an illuminating powder, but it also looks like there's no powder. Like it doesn't look like you powdered. It still looks very natural and undetected. It's really quite remarkable. I know some of you guys are gonna be clutching your pearls when you see the price tag for that, but it's Tom Ford, we know this. And again, I've been using this one for forever and I can still very, very vaguely see the TF uh, debossing in the pan, so she'll last. Next up, we have a 180 that I can't show you because it's a 180 in the bad direction where I loved it and now I would never. And that is the Clinique SPF 50 sunscreen. I can't remember the exact name, so I'll just pop up a picture here. This was one of my favorite sunscreens. In fact, I said as much in my sunscreen video from a couple years ago about the best mineral sunscreens for my brown skin. Well, I don't know what happened over at Clinique Girl, but they must have changed some because the last couple times I bought bottles of that, it had me looking casket sharp. Originally, I I could use that, again, mineral-based sunscreen on this brown skin, no ghost face. Beautiful formula, worked well under makeup. And then I don't know what happened because I used to buy like two or three bottles at a time because she wasn't cheap. So whenever I had 20% off at Ulta or whatever, I would get a couple bottles. And then like the last two bottles I had, I was just like, why do I look like Tyrone Biggums right now? So we're done with her. I haven't been using that sunscreen for a year and a half, two years now. I think it's been that long since I finished my last bottle, but yeah, we're not doing that. 180, no longer recommend. In fact, I should really do an updated video on sunscreens that I do recommend for my complexion at least. My 10th and final 180 is one that went from a love to a hard pass. And that is the Patrick Ta Major Brow, I think it's called. I don't know, it just says Patrick Ta for brows on the front, but I'm pretty sure the official name is Patrick Ta Major Brow. I have the tinted one. I still use this. And it's not that I dislike this per se, it's just too much bother. There's a lot of prep and forethought that I have to put into my face beat to use this. Like I have to make sure I do my brows first, which is just not how I do my makeup normally because it's water activated. So it's just kind of a lot to be like, okay, I gotta remember to do this first because then I'm gonna get water on my foundation if I do my brows after five minutes. Like it's a whole thing. It's just too much planning and prep involved. It's not easy going makeup to use this in my opinion. Not to mention the tint of this, like I don't know who this is tinted for, but this is lighter than even a lot of blonde people's eyebrows. So like, I don't understand whose brows this is tinting. So if you use too much of this, you're just gonna wind up with like weird, pasty, light brown schmutz around your brows, ugh. I do love the effect this gives to my brows. It gives me that like straight up I look like a monster kind of brow, like that's my look, that's my desired aesthetic. I do still use this because there are days where I have the time and the patience. I just wish that she was a bit more 
low maintenance. And now there's an LAPD chopper circling above my apartment building, which means I can only speak in like five second intervals. So I'm just gonna wrap it up because your girl, your girl ain't got the patience. Mm -mm. Thank you for hanging out with me for another installment in my 12 days of Vlogmas. This has been challenging but fun to do, which is exactly what I was hoping for. We have a few days left to go, so if you've been enjoying these, be sure to check out my Patreon to check out any Vlogmas videos you may have missed because all 12 days are available on my notification squad tier and above. Not to mention our Christmas Nap Fam Zoom party is just a few days away, so I love y'all. Stay safe. Stay dangerous and never trust anyone with a Morphe code. Bye bye. That's a, that's a nappy headed hose there. I'm going to tell you that now. Can you hear? Can you hear the chopper? I hate it here. <laughs>